day we hear of a great affirmation of Jesus' authority in his ministry. This passage addresses some key points about Jesus' identity. Firstly, that he is different to all other Jewish teachers in the way he speaks and convinces his audience. Secondly, that he is from God and carries a power vested in him to be recognised as the Holy One of God. And lastly, that he is the Christ, the messianic figure that the Jews have been waiting for, and this passage is a part of his great recognition as such a person. All three are intrinsically important for Jesus' ministry to continue in the following chapters attracting followers and instructing them on how to live in love before his passion, resurrection. We, 2,000 years later, we know that Jesus was the one sent from God to be saviour to the world, who taught the gospel of love and spoke the truth. But we can imagine that those who were originally listening to him when he was teaching so unconventionally, so unusually, would have needed a little bit of convincing when he told them to leave their lives, their beliefs, their homes, their families, to follow him. So Jesus needed to qualify himself with all of his credentials so that he would be taken seriously and the people listening to him would be open to be transformed by his words. If he did not work in such a way that others would be inspired to respect him, and recognise this authority or divine power that was vested in him, I'm sure that we would not be sitting here today muddling over seven verses of a testimony of his life. In fact, Jesus not presenting his divinely gifted abilities to dispel darkness would be a little bit like me getting up before you today, not telling you anything of my credentials to preach, and expecting you to take everything on board and take me seriously, which is of course what I've just done. So I bet that woke you up. So I'd better address that now, methinks. So here we go, Jamie's qualifications. I have an incomplete Bachelor of Theology, one year left of priestly formation. I've worked in the same vet clinic for seven years and qualified as a vet nurse by studying really hard through two years fresh out of high school. I've worked as a relief teacher aide at Majabar Special School as I was considering a profession as a special ed teacher, at least until God gave me a call and told me differently. I'm 21 years old. I have no children except for the four-legged fur baby kind, of which I've had three. I've never lived independently of my family, and I am just me in my direct line, so only child syndrome. I'm sure you'll get used to that this year. I've travelled to seven different countries in the 500 hours I've spent flying in the air and have definitely caught the travel bug. I've been to the Holy Land to dig at Bethsaida and recently developed a chronic condition which has allowed me to become a keen yogi, a yoga goer, and I can now get my foot to touch my mouth. That definitely has to count for something. And no, you're not having a demonstration right now. <laughs> I'm working towards a time, God willing, December this year, when the Archbishop will lay hands on my head and then say the words of the prayer book on page 798, take authority to exercise the office and ministry of a deacon in the Church of God, in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. But it still hasn't happened yet. So what am I doing here? None of that really sounds like I should be up here talking to you about authority. In fact, I think I might not have the right tools for the job as far as qualifications on paper are concerned. Perhaps the fact that I can talk a leg off a chair or an arm off one of you might place me in good stead. But that just happens to be a gift that I have and that you're all lucky enough to enjoy. But truly, I have the same qualifications as every one of you. I've been one of the lucky ones on this earth to experience the truth of the gospel just like you. Undoubtedly, our experiences and our gifts all contribute to our own unique, individual way of expressing our love for God and for others. One for us through the death, resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth, the man with the authority. And that is why I'm giving my love 
in ministry of the preaching and one day ordained sort, and by others live their love in pastoral care, fundraising, teaching children RE in schools, serving the homeless in the drop-in centre, being a faithful friend or family member, or being someone who's not called unchristian, someone living in Jesus' word. We are all qualified to love. And so now, returning to Jesus where we left him in the temple while he was teaching with such authority. In the first lines of the passage, the people listening to Jesus were amazed before he cast out the impure spirit from the man who shouted out. They were amazed because they saw a Jewish teacher, a rabbi, who was different to any other that they had ever experienced before. Rabbis were keepers of the law. You could imagine very strict people who recited Abraham and Moses off the cuff and explained things in black and white, people who lived as superior authorities and expected respect by default. Jesus was convincing, not because he referenced the law constantly or dressed up in fancy clothes and expected people just to listen because he was a rabbi, but because he spoke with passion and spirit, winning people to his side with ease of the truth. As Geoffrey Blaney, one of my favourite scholars, suggests in A Short History of Christianity, here was a young amateur making the professionals themselves seem amateur. So this episode in the temple directly follows Jesus calling his disciples Simon and Andrew and then James and John Zebedee, aka the Sons of Thunder away from their fishing occupation, away from their families, and away from their homes to follow him. Not just anyone can walk by and whistle up a few faithful followers that will follow them to the death. Well, actually, you probably could if you were to adopt a little animal from the Anna Welfare League and save their little lives. They would be devoted to you forever and ever. But that's by the by and a little different when you're dealing with people. Jesus spoke with the authority of God as a messenger and teacher appointed to minister on earth. Because of this authority, Jesus was inspiring and the influence he still has on people today is beyond anything we could possibly comprehend. We are living proof of that. So when the impure spirit rocks up and starts shouting out at Jesus, it identifies him as the Holy One of God. This is a title which links Jesus of Nazareth, the man teaching all presence in the temple, with such influence to the Messiah, who the Jews have been waiting for. In our Old Testament reading today, we can understand the expectations the Jews might have had for their Messiah. Deuteronomy detailed the qualifications of said Messiah. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people, a Jew. And you shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord any more, or ever again see his great fire, I shall die. And the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. How would you not believe the words of God? Anyone who does not heed the words of the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. That sounds like authority to me. So here we have a clear understanding of what it is that this impure spirit was possibly doing in this Bible passage. It provided Jesus with a link and an identity with the power of God in his ability to command the spirit, but also his selfhood which was proclaimed prophet and messiah who was sent to save the world. So the next part of the passage, which tells of the people's amazement and then Jesus' growing reputation as a man from God in the region of Galilee, can help us to affirm our calling to spread Jesus' authority. This event caused the people who witnessed it to proclaim Jesus to the region, and the people in those days weren't likely to travel far. So for work to spread fast and wide, it was quite remarkable. And this is a trend. In all of our Gospels, the spreading of the words, deeds and passion of Jesus Christ can be seen as our legacy. Often when I am asked by friends who have no faith in Jesus, 
how I can prove to them that he really did die and raise again, and was indeed the Messiah and not just a really good guy with some nice words to say and a message of love. Sometimes I just say, because I spoke to him and he told me so, to be a bit cheeky. But when serious, I reply, because I am here, and I am one of many who believe 2,000 years on. On news.com.au last Monday, Melissa Overman published statistics for Australia Day and stated that the number of Australians identifying their religion as Christianity is eight times larger than all other religions combined. The fact that through the ages, people have held to the gospel and ministry of Christ as their salvation and what they have done with that belief amazing things is the testimony to our faith. Because miracles happen every time a congregation gathers together, all in their diversity, such different people, not getting along all the time, we have to concede, but living in love with one another for the sake of God in Christ. We are all the evidence that the world needs to know that Jesus really did have the authority to teach us how to love. We are all the evidence the world needs to know that Jesus of Nazareth was the Christ who saved us all from slavery to sin. We are all the evidence the world needs to know about God and God's love. It's us, you and me, and all the others who join on a Sunday morning to worship. It is my prayer that we will take authority to serve and minister in our world for Christ. We proudly and confidently profess Christ by the way we live and how we live with others in community. In the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, the authority, the power and the love of all time. Amen.